Oh, hello and welcome to the VK6CS Amateur Radio Channel. Uh, just for fun, I thought I'd have a quick look at the um, the 998RT tuner. Um, as you may know, if you've seen the previous video, I got a brand new one of these, my shiny new 998RT, out of the box, fired it up and didn't tune, got warm, produced a nasty smell. So, rather disappointing. However, I thought, well, I'm going to be flicking them an email tomorrow and see what can be done about it. But um, in the meantime, just for fun, what could potentially be the problem? So I looked at the circuit the other day and I thought, this is not the circuit diagram of the 998RT. I'll show you what I mean. Now, if I go to uh, Downloads, MFJ, MFJ 998RT Downloads, OK? And it says uh, up here we've got a uh, there's a PDF which is a, a manual. Here it says MFJ 998 and MFJ 998 RT Rev 1A schematic. Okay, so let's click on that. And we'll have a quick look at the schematic. Seem to have downloaded that. Don't mind? Okay, now here's the schematic miracle of modern technology and it says here not for public release not for public release <gasps> confidential I wonder if they know it's on their website maybe I should uh, well actually I can't I was going to say I was gonna, maybe I should pause the video and uh, have a look under the table and in the shrubbery outside to see if there's a representative from MFJ lurking just to make sure I don't look at this circuit diagram but as this bloody pile of rubbish camera the Panasonic 770 doesn't have a pause function, I won't be able to do that. I'll just have to press on and hope that's not the case. Right. So, where were we? The schematic. Right, okay. Not really interested in this bit. This is the bit we're interested in. Okay. Oh, that was, didn't take too much finding, did it? <clears throat> now, I looked at this. Um, uh, yesterday or whenever it was and I thought this is not the circuit of the 998RT because here it's showing the RF coming in so this is the RF and DC input you've got a little transformer arrangement here this is for the SWR detection reflected forward goes along here and you've got switchable inductors along here as the output and there's the there's the wire that's the insulated post I have my wire antenna connected to and there's a coaxial connection there if you're running a bit of coax up to another type of antenna and you can switch in all these different inductors and down here's a lot of capacitors either side of the either side of the uh, the inductors so I think I read somewhere it's an L match there's capacitors on both sides so it could be an L match probably is an L match but um, you know looking at that you couldn't really tell could it just as easily be a pi match but the bit we're interested in is this bit here. There is no DC blocking. You know, the RF comes in here, goes off here to transmitter, whatever this is. Doesn't really matter because you wouldn't want DC going along here through this, through these, out to the antenna. Uh, you probably wouldn't want DC coming down here. Um, might, might not matter, but there's no DC blocking. Where's the, where's the, where's the internal bias T? And uh, I'll use my shiny new whiteboard uh, to show you what I mean. Now, because this bloody camera doesn't have a pause function, I'm going to put my hand over the lens because I wouldn't want you to see me wading around knee deep in fish skeletons and chicken carcasses. I mean, you might hear it, but uh, I wouldn't want you to see it. That would just be too embarrassing. And the my hand is very dirty. Yes, you're quite right. I've been doing lots of work in the garden. Right. So, on my shiny new whiteboard, I hope I can show you what I mean. So, if you recall, is it going to focus? You've got the RF comes in through the SO239 connector there. Remember, it's RF and DC comes in. Um, went through a little arrangement there and into the RF components and there's a transformer there 
for detecting the SWR, forward and reflective power. No DC blocking, so any DC would just go straight into the, into the unit. I thought, well, that can't be what's inside it. What's inside it must be um, the inbuilt BIOS T. So that will go to the chassis. That's the same RF plus DC input. It's, it's marked as being on the 998. That would have to come in like that. Go through the blocking capacitor like that. The RF, that is, would go through the blocking capacitor. DC would not be blocked by that capacitor. That would then go off to the other bit of circuitry you know, that we can see. The SWR detection circuit here. And it occurred to me that at this point here, they're going to have to have an RF choke. That's going to have to be de de uh, decoupled with a capacitor, like that, that point there. And there's going to be the 12 volts that goes off to, you know, wherever it goes to inside the unit. <coughs> so the RF can't go down here, it's blocked by this little RF choke. And the DC can't go past there because it's blocked by this DC blocking capacitor. Now, many years ago, um, when CB radio first uh, took off in the UK back in the 80s, the CBs used to have a thing in them called a, an idiot diode, which was a diode that would be connected like that. So that if somebody connected the polarity, the power supply, the wrong way round to their CB radio, this diode would conduct and it would blow the fuse. So I thought, I wonder if this tuner's got an idiot diode in it and the, and the idiot diode has been connected the wrong way round. Because if the idiot diode is connected the wrong way round, you put the power in with the correct polarity and you would get the effect that I've got in that, you know, it gets hot, smells bad, generally unhappy. Uh, because there's quite a long run of coax from here to the house, which is where the 12 volts is injected, so you've got the resistance of the coax, and this is not drawing enough current to blow the fuse at the house end. So I thought, okay, well let's see, how can we how can we see if this thing's likely to have an idiot diode in it, and whether or not the idiot diode is the wrong way around. Now, fortunately being, uh, being an idiot, I do have an idiot diode handy, and here it is. Is it going to... Is it going to focus? Right, you'll see that the diode has a band around one end. And that is the cathode end of the diode. So if the anode end of the diode is positive to the cathode end of the diode, the diode will conduct. So if that diode was on that circuit like that, with the band at the bottom, this effectively would be a nail to the 12 volt supply and cause problems. If it's that way around, so you apply a positive voltage to the cathode and it doesn't conduct, uh, sorry, it, it won't conduct because it will be hard off. You put a uh, positive voltage there on the cathode, this diode will be hard off and be open circuit. So let's just have a little look with my meter. I have to get the lounge floor leveled at some point. <laughs> <laughs> right now, here is my antique meter. I think I've, I think I've already done the uh, the science museum door prize gag for this particular device, so I'll refrain from doing that. I'll edit that out, yeah. just to keep the uh, keep keep the purists <laughs> keep the purists happy. Okay, people say you, you cannot repeat stuff. Right. Okay. Here we go. It's off. Okay, that's probably when we've got the camera between me and the meter, so let's put it on um, times one. Touch the probes together. Oh, it's zeroed. Okay. So we'll put the probes on the diode. The black one on the anode, and the red one on the cathode. And we're getting a reading of 18, or I'm getting a reading of 18 ohms. You can probably see that. That tells us actually that the way that the voltage coming out of the meter is polarised. So on the black probe, funnily enough, we have a positive voltage. If I put another meter on here and we measured the voltage on the two probes that are used for the resistance, we'd find that this is, this is positive and this is negative. OK, so there we go. So with the red probe on the cathode, which is the end of the band around it, we're getting a reading of 18 ohms. 
and the other way around. It's open circuit. There's nothing there. So let's see what happens if we do the same thing with the RT998. 998RT. The new MFJ auto tuner. <laughs> You know, I'm, I really should get a fez for doing these videos. You know, it's an awful lot like Tommy Cooper, really, isn't it? You know, just like that. <laughs> right, now, put the meter here. Oh, and I can smell that just by, just by moving the tuner up onto the whiteboard. I can smell that electrical burning smell. Mm. Now, remember, with the diode, Bands at the top, that's the cathode, red probe on there, 20 ohms. The other way around, there's nothing. So if this diode is connected correctly, if I put the red probe on the chassis and the black probe on the centre pin of the RF input socket, that should be open circuit. It would be like that. It would be, like, be like doing that. Now if the diode is the wrong way around, if the diode is on the board upside down, just so you can sort of relate it to the circuit diagram, like that. So I put the black probe on the centre pin of that, the red probe on the chassis. If I get a reading something like 18 ohms, chances are this thing's got an idiot diode in it and chances are the idiot diode is connected the wrong way around. So let's give it a try. because my hand is in the way. There we go, look at that. Pretty much identical reading. So between the centre pin and the chassis, 18 ohms. That looks to me, I could just make sure that it's open circuit the other way around, so I've got the red in the centre pin. Red in the centre pin, and the black on the chassis, like that, open circuit. So there's obviously no short inside it, because if it was short inside, it would show the short. It wouldn't be 20 ohms, it would be less than that. 20 ohms obviously is good enough uh, to, uh, as a short. <clears throat> because there's a very low resistance in one direction and not in the other, there's no short, there's nothing touching the metal case inside causing a short. It looks like there's a diode to me between that line and chassis, and it looks to me like that diode is the wrong way around. There you go. So I reckon, I reckon that's the problem. I reckon it's a manufacturing issue and when they put it together they put the diode in the board the wrong way up. Just a guess, but uh, that if I had to bet on the cause of the problem that's where my two dollars would be. So <clears throat> I'll have to, uh, I'll have to box it up and um, well I'll flick them an email tomorrow and uh, see what they've got to say about it. I'm sure they'll be okay. Well I hope they'll be okay. I'll be certain, I'll certainly be quick enough to tell you if they're not. And um, I'll probably be flicking an email to MFJ as well. Um, signed absolutely apoplectic Royal Tunbridge Wells. Um, but um, it's, good. it's got a hole burnt in the case as well. It's touching the got a hole burn in the case as well so you know even if they said to me um, you know do you fancy opening it up and have a look I'd probably be reluctant to do that because the board's probably or the board could be compromised it could be uh, you know tarnished burnt um, obviously the tracks intact so I can measure the diode through it um, but um, I don't think I'd be happy to keep this with the hole in the case as well and have to glue something over that and then straight away it's gone from being a uh, uh, a nice shiny new uh, auto tuner to being something that's really, you know, something that's uh, not quite right. So there we go. I'll uh, I'll be sure and let you uh, uh, let you know what uh, what happens. Hope you found that. Oh, pardon me. In my stomach rumbling now. I need some lunch. Or was it the Harg Burger? I've had one of those legendary Harg Burgers today. The Hills Amateur Radio Group uh, 
the, the Harg Fest was on today, so I've been up there and uh, seen some of the guys and um, had a bit of a chat. Had a Harg burger and uh, returned home a little while ago. And I thought, oh, I'll just knock this video out quickly because the alternative is getting stuck into the uh, getting back stuck into the uh, the gardening work. As always, hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.